going around the globe for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Welcome to God's View. Hello and welcome to God's View. We're so glad you joined us today. Remember, get your favorite drink. Join us around the table. We have a phenomenal guest with us today that we will introduce to you in a minute, Richard, and uh, phenomenal testimony. So make sure you tell some friends. And if you were just clicking through that channel, stay right there because it was no accident. God has something for you, okay? You know, a lot of people, I hear it all the time on the prayer lines, clicking through the channel, and I stayed and my life was changed. Well, mm -hmm. let yours be changed because nothing's an accident. It's a divine appointment right now that you found us, okay? So stay there. You're going to love today. And please call the prayer lines, 307-637-PRAY-7729. Always here behind my head on a full shot and periodically across the bottom of the screen. So if you don't get it, you have plenty of other options to jot it down before the end. Say this all the time, and I mean it with all my heart. You are anonymous. I have never solicited anybody in 17 years. You, I don't know who you are. You will not get a give us the next week, anything. And, and you can feel just free to share what you need to share and get set free because you're anonymous. And that's why I think we get so many serious breakthroughs and great calls because you feel comfortable and we're thankful that you call trust me just the calls this week i mean i just like i just thank the lord that you know somebody's life would be saved or they're not going to kill themselves because they called god's view prayer lines and i mean i just I, I, it's just so amazing to me and i'm grateful i'm humbled and honored that god would call my husband and i to this ministry we're humbled and we're honored that he uses us to go around the world with the gospel of jesus christ mm -hmm. so i'm sharing me back to mary your god's view host i'm so glad you joined us today okay this is stephanie besh priscilla pruett and we're going to go with lana because these are our regular hosts okay and then i'm going to my dear friend that's in from philadelphia <laughs> and that is rhoda faye deal i can say her name right you can go to rotafaydeal.com and you want to because this book has sold thousands and thousands of copies it's the jericho fast it's amazing she's been on a lot of different um tv uh, shows um, talking about this book and if she comes to your church she sings like an angel plays the keys and if you want her in preaches like a, a, a I say a mad woman but she's not mad she got the <laughs> Holy Ghost the mind of Christ and just anointed and so if you want her I mean you can go to Rhoda Faye Deal it's D-I-E-H-L and uh, uh, we'll have it sooner or later across the bottom of the screen because she's going to be being interviewed so, Rhoda, thank you for coming all the way. Thank you for here. having me. Thank you. And yeah. then we have right over here our special yes. guest, Richard Chidez. Because I have to write it different. It's C-H-A-I-D-E-Z, and I would have probably hacked that, but I write it down differently, so it's Chidez. And uh, he's going to be telling us about himself and his testimony, whatever God says. Mm -hmm. See, we let the Holy Spirit roll here. We don't have teleprompters. Things may go flying, but guess what? We're real. Mm -hmm. Just give us a moment. We'll pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll pick it up or something. We have things. Papers go flying. <laughs> mints across the table. Whatever. <laughs> we see something, and we got to fix it because we're girls, and we want everything perfect. We do. Okay. So, Richard. Thank you so much. Shake his hand for coming. Yes, thank, thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. We are so glad you're here. Mm -hmm. So just roll, shoot, tell us a little bit about yourself or what God's doing through you or your testimony. Because wasn't you a drug addict or a uh, drug dealer? Well, where do you want to start? Well, you yeah, start wherever you want. What version do you want? Yeah. 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 Don't you don't want the whole truth, truth and nothing but the truth? Okay. Go for it. So yeah. help yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, like Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. Yeah. Well, first off, um, thank you so much for having me. It's an oh. honor to be here with you oh. ladies. Um, yeah, when I was asked to do this, uh, it, there was no kind of hesitation in it. It was kind of, it was kind of just immediate, right? So um, yeah, just say that I'm honored to be here and just uh, share what God has put on my heart and what he's done in my life. But first off, my name is Richard Chaitas. Um, I'm 43 years old. I'm a father of three, married to my beautiful wife, Sylvia. For oh, Sylvia, come on years. up just behind him for a minute so we can show you. Come yeah. on. She's in the audience. <laughs> we was going to have her on today, but we just have so many today. We have an extra guest. <laughs> yeah. Come on up here and stand behind your husband. Yeah. Oh, and, 
there she is. There we go. Yes. Look at, there yeah. she is. Yes. So yes. honored to have you both. Yes. yes. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Because she would be on here. She rocks it too. She's an anointed woman of God. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just today we had just yeah. This just work, yeah. you know. Because and next time we'll get next, like yeah. the this out of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next time. Yeah. Huh. Next time. She, she's well, she's so the reason. She's you. she's one of the reasons God has used her so much um, in my life. So first, I just want to say thank you um, to her for all that she's uh, been through with me. So for starters, where where to start? Uh, let's just start with uh, at a young age. So you know, as I said, I'm 43 years old. Um, I grew up always knowing who the Lord was. Uh -huh. I can still distinctly remember at the age of, at the age of seven, wow. um, just knowing that God was real. Uh, just awesome. a very young yeah. age, that knowing that God was real. Yeah. Uh, my parents, uh, when they were still together, um, we grew up in, I was born in Los Angeles. Uh, we lived in, uh, we lived in Texas for a stint. I think it was about Sherman, Texas, and that was about a year. Um, then we came back to, uh, Los Angeles, lived there for a majority of our lives. So I'm the oldest of five boys. Mm -hmm. um, and so my parents, uh, at the time we were young, just me and the brother right next to me, they were going to Grace Community Church in Panorama City. And if you're familiar with Grace Community Church, that is John MacArthur's church. Mm -hmm. So John MacArthur's church was originally where I was introduced to who the Lord was. I can remember distinctly in a little chapel off the side, just believing completely and fully that Jesus was real mm -hmm. and accepting the Lord into my heart. Like you couldn't tell me and any other, any other thing. I knew the earth was created. I knew that he always lived. I knew that he came, he died, he rose again. I knew those things at a very young age. So I remember awesome. receiving, I remember receiving the Lord at about seven. It had to be about seven or eight because it was about third grade. Um, but my parents at the time, they weren't really active, like active in the in the church community. We just went to church, you know, as, as much of American Christianity is. It's just the attendance of a, of a building rather mm -hmm. than a, mm -hmm. a sacrificed mm -hmm. life. So not really knowing too much of, of gifts of the Holy Spirit or who the Holy Spirit is and just how he operates in the life of a believer. So I didn't didn't really understand that. But I always maintained somewhat of a relationship with the Lord. I always remember saying my prayers at mm -hmm. night before I go to bed. I, I always that. remember mm -hmm. saying, good night, Lord. I always mm -hmm. remember uh, waking up in the morning and saying, good morning, Lord. Mm -hmm. um, I always remember that. Um, so fast forward about the age of seven, we'd end up moving away uh, from Los Angeles and we came to uh, Bakersfield, California, which mm -hmm. is pretty much where I'm from. Grew up in Bakersfield, California. Del Taco. Uh, yeah, Del Taco, <laughs> Del Taco. Grew up in Bakersfield, California. And um, my parents, I was 10 years old when I remember my dad distinctly pulling me in the front yard and saying, me and your mom are divorcing. Oh. Mm. And at the time, that was okay with me. That was perfectly all right with me. My dad, um, I have a really, uh, I have a relationship with my dad. My relationship with my father is what my dad wants it to be, and I'm okay with that now mm -hmm. uh, as an adult, and then that's fine. I love him, bless him. But at the time when he said that he, they, were, they were splitting up and that he was leaving, I said, great, yeah. this is awesome. Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I want now. So about 10 or 11, I think, was the age that I heard that. But I remember that conversation distinctly. Mm -hmm. After that, they divorced, and um, it was just my mom, who was a single mother of four boys at the time. Wow. Um, one, I was 11. My so brother true. was nine. My other brother <laughs> was six, and my other brother was two. Wow. wow. And wow. so my mom, as awesome as she is, uh, that was a lot of work for her. Yeah. It was a lot of work for her, especially growing up in the community that we grew up yeah. in, growing up in the neighborhood that we grew up in. Um, it was kind of a hard thing for her, right? And so she put herself through college mm -hmm. uh, while working a job and having four boys. Wow. Wow. But, yeah, but with her being wow. gone so much, it opened up a lot of opportunity yeah. for yes. me to be out in the neighborhood with right. the different male influences in that right. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And because being a child and not knowing that I'm really hungering and, and, and yearning for a, a male's direction in my right. life, yes. I sought that in Something friends, else. I sought yeah. that in gang that culture, I saw, yeah. that in life, I saw that in lifestyle. So growing up, this is around 12. Things didn't really start to change or shift until I was about 14. Mm -hmm. um, so in high school, um, played a lot of sports. 
Um, but my mom and we just didn't have the financial means to, mm -hmm. you know, do yeah. the things that, that I wanted to do as a, as a young man. I mean, I still remember food stamps when they were actual paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I still remember those things. Yeah. Yeah. Was your dad at all involved? Was he <coughs> helping at all? He attempted. Okay. He attempted. Okay. So he, oh, he did, good. he did, yeah. he did attempt, uh, to do, to do, um, he attempted to, to pick us up every weekend, and I think that lasted for a little while. And he shifted. Like, he went from yeah. being the kind of tyrant that he was at home yeah. to being the Disneyland dad. Yeah. You know, and they, so, the, yeah, so there's a, there's a, yeah, there's a huge yeah. shift. And then after that, when that doesn't get financially, you know, viable for a while, yeah. then it just becomes, you know, we would just go over to his house. He would still take us to, take us to church. Um, this was a Southern Baptist church. So I've seen a whole... Spectrum, yes. right? Uh, yeah. The whole heritage of Christianity, yes. like Southern yeah. Baptist, you know, <laughs> um, very conservative, you know, mm -hmm. Grace Community, and so growing up in that, I wasn't, I didn't really make a connection. My father's gone, and now I'm starting to have more mm -hmm. fun, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm starting yeah, to have right. make more, have more yeah. fun yeah. as yeah. a kid. Do whatever right. I want. Yeah, do what I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Like there's right. no consequences. Yeah. My mom's always gone. This, yeah. that, that yeah. and the other. Yep, got you. But that led to, um, that led to me getting involved with uh, drugs at about the age of about 14. 14. So right before wow. I turned 15, um, that was about the first time that I um, started using methamphetamine. Wow. Um, so I'm a sophomore in high school. Uh, sophomore in high school. My mom is always gone. A um, yeah. lot of bad role models around me, you know, yeah. trying to fit in, trying to be a part of something. Um, wow. And that turned into, I think it was about junior year. So I was right before I about turned 16. So right about 16 years old um, is when I really became um, addicted to methamphetamine. Mm -hmm. I was always wow. a good student, always good at sports, always good at athletics. Wow. And so I just stopped going to school. So stopped going to school. Mm -hmm. um, so I dropped out of ju I dropped out of high school um, at the age of s about 16 and a half, 17. So my junior year. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, never gra graduated high school, and it was just a spiral of addiction. It was a mm -hmm. spiral of addiction from 16 until about 19 years mm -hmm. old, and that seems like a short time. But in that short time, I caused a lot of damage to my own life, and not only yeah. that, but to the life mm -hmm. of you know, like my mother and things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And my mom, bless her heart, as much as she tried, um, at some point or another, she had to draw a line in the right. sand. And so I wasn't allowed to be at home anymore. Um, I wasn't allowed to, to stay there or to be there or anything like that. And I felt really left out. So at first mm -hmm. you feel abandoned Ooh, and then right. you feel left out, mm -hmm. right. right? So you feel mm -hmm. isolated. Yeah. So what's the one thing that we do? We, we seek to fill that right. void. So mm -hmm. I just continued to seek and fill that void through um, drugs, yeah. uh, through uh, drug dealing, uh, just trying wow. to fit in with the people around me, uh, gang lifestyle and culture like that. And it got to the point to where I started, um, it got to the point where I started to become really addicted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the point that I became homeless. Wow. See, so once you don't have anything to offer that yeah. community anymore, mm -hmm. right. you, you're, you're cast you're out. Away. Yeah, you're, you're mm -hmm. thrown away, right? So mm -hmm. again, we deal with abandonment. Yeah. You see a pattern in my life. You see a pattern of abandonment, right. isolation, and then abandonment again. Yeah. So what happens? Yes. What do we naturally do? We isolate again. Yeah. And so at that time, um, I was homeless from the time I was about 18 until I was 19 years old. Um, just living on the streets from house to house, going to different people's houses, trying to, trying to stay there, trying to live. And I'm still, like, as old as I am now, I look back and I'm like, I was still just a child. Yes. Yeah. I was yeah. still That's a still kid. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. It's, it's True. hard because True. at the time you're like, well, I want to take responsibility for my own actions like I knew better. Yes, there is an accountability, but I've told this story to my wife before and she's the one that actually really brought it up to me. I was like, yeah, but you were still a kid. Yeah. You right. had no frame. So right. Yeah. 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 And so homeless individual, 18, 19 years old. And that was the time I committed my first crime. It was a residential burglary. Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. And it was just for no other reason than the individual wouldn't let me stay there. So oh, I waited, yeah. lied in wait and wait till they left mm -hmm. and I robbed their house. Well, at the time in California, uh, they considered a residential burglary a violent crime. So oh. that was around the time of the, oh. it's still around the time felony. of the three strikes law, <sighs> okay. right? Mm -hmm. So I caught my first felony when I was about 18 or 19 wow. years old. Um, they offered me, um, they offered me two years in prison. I didn't take it because it was my first time. 
Now, granted, my dad at this time really, really tried to be there for me. He let wow. me stay at his house, and he knew that I was going to be going through this. But at this point, I'm so far gone, I don't even right. care. Yeah. Right. No amount of love is, is going right. to, no. to cover this so up. You're still right? addicted to meth. Right. Still addicted to meth, right? Yeah. Methamphetamine, marijuana, uh, not so much alcohol, but those two are like were really big at the wow. time for me in my life. Um, and so... I end up refusing that offer of, mm. of two years because I'm scared. Like, I don't want to go to prison. Right, like, right. I've never been to prison. I've never, you know. So they offer me a, a year and a year. What that basically is is you can do a year in county jail and you can do a year in a rehabilitation home. Mm. So like, okay. okay, that's so good. There's yeah. an option, right? Mm -hmm. There's an option. Okay, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> good so I did the, yeah. did the year in county jail and I couldn't get out until a program had accepted me. I ended up writing to Teen Challenge. They yes. came and they saw me. Wow. They came and they saw me and they disqualified me. They what? said, no. what? Yeah. Don't ask me why, but watch this. I had something greater. Wow. <laughs> well, so I get refused by Teen Challenge. Again, abandonment, rejection, yes. isolation. Wow. You just yes. continue to see this Ooh, pattern in my life. Sought out. Yeah, He's every known. place I sought yeah. out was rejected. Wow. There was a man named Gilbert Limones. Um, he's gone on to be with the Lord, but he came and saw me. He was from Victory Outreach. Okay. He was yeah. from Victory Outreach mm -hmm. in Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. um, and he was the home director at the time. And so he came and he saw me and he, they accepted me into there. So I was able to get out and go to the wow. Victory Outreach Praise home. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Victory Outreach home was very militant. Mm -hmm. Like it was very um, militant, a lot of discipline. You were up at 5 a.m. Wow. You were in prayer by 5.30. You were out of prayer by 6.30. You were off to breakfast, then it was off to your chores. And then it was, it was just very, mm -hmm. then it was off to chapel. Like you had a Bible study every morning. So mm -hmm. it was just a year of this, just constantly being fed by the Lord. Wow. And when you're in, the thing is with addicts is we're very good at adapting. Mm -hmm. We're very good at adapting to the environment around us to portray mm -hmm. the image of exactly what it is that you yeah, want to right. see yeah. so that we can just get by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So because that seed of the Lord was still in my heart, I was able to not only adapt, but I was still soaking in everything, yes. but it wasn't right. making a change. Right. There was no heart change because fast forward a year after that, I think it was like the first week that I got out, I went right back to drugs. Oh, wow. Yeah. So this was 19 oh, to 20. So I get out at around 21. I go right back to it. I go back to court. God extends his grace to me again wow. and this wow. time they were like okay we'll let you go back to this rehabilitation program wow. i went back and i did so another beautiful. year <gasps> at victory oh yeah, i did another wow. year at victory wow. outreach wow. Wow. still didn't change my heart mm. so wow. i did another year now i know the program i know yes. exactly how to do it to i know how to act how to i know how to act repentant wow. like i've yeah. just made a mistake i've done mm -hmm. this <laughs> and i know how to game this system and then so when i got out of the second time, I successfully graduated that again. I got out a second time, and I think I was around 20, 23 or so. And I ended up going right back to the neighborhood that I came from, mm -hmm. back with the same people in the same yeah. crowd. Mm -hmm. And it was at that time that um, the individuals that we had grown up with, um, I started hanging around with them more. Um, and this is where my, this is where my oldest son came from. His name's Elias. Um, he lives in Oklahoma. But throughout that time is when um, he was, you know, he was conceived and he was, he was brought in, he was brought into this world. However, at the time, we were, I was on the run from probation and parole. I was on the run. I was not doing the things that I was supposed to do because they gave me a stipulation the second time that I go back, we're going to put you back on three years felony probation. If you mess up this time, you're going back to prison. So I did mess up, and so I'm on the run, and we're attempting to flee to go to Oklahoma. This was me and my son's mom at the time. And not just flee like for any other, other reason than just still strung out on drugs, wow. still that lifestyle, mm -hmm. still living in that, that uh, you know, that, that degradation, um, and just heading off on a drive. So we leave from Bakersfield, California um, at about 3 o'clock in the morning uh, to drive to Oklahoma. Uh, we're in a night. We're in a 2005 GMC Sierra truck. Mm -hmm. um, there are three kids in the back. Uh, this woman that I'm with has three children on her own, mm -hmm. and one's four, one's two, fully autistic, oh. and then there's a baby who's uh, five months old. Mm -hmm. 
And because we had been in that lifestyle of drug and addictions for so long, we had been up, I think, at that time for about three or four days. And so we're driving away at about three o'clock in the morning. Actually, yeah, it was about, yeah, I want to say, I don't remember the time frame, but I know it was still night. Um, and I remember just passing out. I had been oh. up for about three or four days, and I remember passing mm. out. I couldn't stay awake anymore. Oh. Yeah. And all I remember mm. from this time, and I still remember this vividly, I remember the dream, and I hear this loud, like, crunch and this crash, mm. and I feel my body moving, and I feel my mm. head hit pavement. Oh, and I wake up Jesus. to this person shaking me and saying, wake up, wake up, wake up. Mm. Wow. And so I wake up. I smell the smell of fire, I smell electrical fire, and I'm disoriented. I've already been awake for three days. Like I was wow. in a deep like coma sleep. Mm. So coming out of that, and I remember being in the desert. We were in the middle of the desert. Mm. And I remember um, the, the woman that I was with at the time says, get the kids, yeah. uh, the, the three children that she had with her. And I get out and I grab the two out of the back. She goes around to the other side and she says, Oh my goodness, where's the baby? <gasps> where's the baby? So in our in her state in her state of addiction and her state of um, She didn't buckle her in. She didn't buckle her in. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, and this is awful. so she didn't buckle her in. And all I see is a line of cars stretched for miles, line of trucks stretched stretched for miles. Oh God. And by this time I'm already going into shock. I know I'm going into shock yeah. because after that, I don't remember anything. Wow. I just remember holding Lord, one yeah, of those Lord, children, yeah. walking across the street. I remember seeing in the lights, the truckers, God bless them, they were taking a blanket and they were covering up <gasps> something, but I don't remember oh, what right. I saw. Yeah. You know, I don't remember what I saw. Uh -huh. um, and I end up staggering back to where the truck's at and I end up laying down in the, um, I end up laying down in the, in the sand or whatever, the dirt, and it's cold. It's not Colorado cold, but it's cold. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember everything feeling very, very weird. Yeah. If you've ever been around death, if you've ever been around the spirit of death, mm -hmm. it feels yes. frightening. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. very frightening yeah. because it's like, yeah. it's eerie. death. It's yeah. eerie. Yeah. It is. Everything's like really dark. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's like, nothing's like piercing through. But I remember these two truckers and I just remember... I remember this one standing behind oh, another really? trucker and he just looks at me and he goes, don't worry, Jesus is here. Wow. And I remember oh, him saying that. I know. For people who know yeah. Jesus. And so wow. the, the, the woman that I was with suffered massive head trauma and she was airlifted to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I get put in the ambulance with these two, with these two children um, and they take, me to a, they take me to a hospital. We go to the hospital, doctor checks me out. He goes, you don't have a scratch on you. Wow. Wow. So oh, I wasn't, I wasn't Jesus. buckled. You, you didn't have a buckled, neither. I, what? I wasn't buckled. Oh my wow. goodness. Yeah, I wasn't. That's, that's a miracle. miracle. That's a miracle. Oh he knew where you'd be sitting. Today. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't buckled. He had a praying mother. And yeah. the baby died though. Huh? And the baby died. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the baby and the two other children, they came. They, they came out, they came out fine. Okay, um, they they yeah, came through that okay. fine. So no, fast forward yes. after this event, I end up going back to Bakersfield, getting how somehow back to Bakersfield. And it's just a massive time of, tra uh, of shama, uh, trauma and shock at the time. Yeah. Five, yeah, five, five minutes more. Yeah, five minutes. Okay, let me finish it up. I'll finish this up in five minutes. Massive amount of, uh, of trauma and shock in my life. And so you would think at this time, I would have given my life to the Lord and completely turned it around. No, I was 26 years old. And for the sake of time, I'll say right now, Jesus didn't become Lord of my life until 14 years later. Wow. 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 And wow. two more trips to, to prison. So wow. how many times did you go to prison? I started going to prison when I was 19. Um, I didn't get out until I was 30. Wow. I didn't stop okay. going until I was 30. And there's a long story after this. Well, here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, um, I second. want, yeah, we're going to do a second show. 
And uh, so just know that when, when you're watching this, and this happens to us all the time. It's so funny. Oh, I watch that show because they're in the same colors. So we're going to be in the same clothes, okay? Because we're not changing, but we're going to have show two with uh, Richard because I just, I, I don't want to hurry that testimony. I think there's a lot of people that need yeah. to they hear They need to hear it. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. and that way he doesn't have to rush and just go to the yeah. 30 years later yeah. and all this kind of stuff, okay? But here's, here's the deal. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is what we're all about. Okay, and the God that delivered him, that he sits right here, can deliver you. Right. Drugs and all. You may be on the streets. I went into um, Sam's one day, and God's view was on all the TVs. Because God had something to say to somebody. Maybe they were there. A street person called, they seen it on a TV in the, in the store. Because God has a way to get you to listen to what he needs you to hear oh, so that it will mm -hmm. get you out of your mess because yeah. it will encourage you because God's no respecter of persons. He loves you and he wants you delivered too. But first you have to accept him. And yes, he had a bunch of different schooling. See, that's the thing. It could be head knowledge and people send you to all these programs, but it's got to be, you got to experience him. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit and fire has to come in your life and then there's change. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Jesus you the, the first thing is you accept him and i know the word says you know believe in your uh, heart confess with your mouth merge those two and you shall be saved but many times i tell you this you're sitting there just so broken sobbing you can't even pray after what i'm saying to ask jesus into your life and to forgive you of your sins but he knows that you're crying out here he hears the sob. he knows you want him and so if, if you got saved today, call our prayer lines or somebody, tell somebody. Because I'll tell you, don't wait to clean up. Jesus, that's the biggest lie. People say, well, God doesn't want me. You don't know what I've done. Hey, mm -hmm. I don't know what you've done. I know I've done a lot of bad stuff in my life. And, and, and I'll tell you, many of us did, but Jesus mm -hmm. came to seek and save the lost. And he came and sought us while we were yet sinners. We were a mess, okay? A mess. Then ask him to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. It will give you a fresh desire. It will give you a, a, a fire. It will burn out all the stuff that's ucky. And then it will give you that desire to just want to please him and serve him. And the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. And you don't have to worry about the Holy Spirit. Because he'll always guide you back to the Father in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself said, I leave him for you. You're the one that are, you're supposed to trust in the Holy Spirit. Now that's the Holy Spirit. He'll lead and guide you into all truth. He'll comfort you. He'll counsel you. And because Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the uh, Father ever making an intercession for us. Right. You, you, you need to start honoring the Holy Ghost and your whole life will change. I've never been the same since I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. I've been on fire ever since. I'm going to stay on fire until he takes me into glory. That's right. Amen. That's right. It's Amen. your birthday today. It's your yes. new birthday today. Mm -hmm. So if you said that prayer every year in heaven, everybody's going to be having a big old party with your favorite colors and cake and everything else. <laughs> and all heaven's rejoicing right Amen. now because right. of you decided to come to the Lord. Amen. We're so thankful. And so remember, tell somebody. Tell mm -hmm. somebody about it. Yes. And then please go to our website today. Get one of my prophetic paintings some of our own God's View anointing oil. It's phenomenal. It has great ingredients, high quality, and smells good. Rose is sharing a little pearl in there for your value. And we have a new spray one. You can use it as perfume or anointing oil. It's a game changer for me when I go minister. Now, some people don't want it on their clothes. Just tell them, open your hand, spray it on their hand, okay? Squirt it right in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I just say, close your eyes, squirt. No, I don't do that. But anyways, <laughs> it helps us keep coming in your home and around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, everybody mm -hmm. thinks everybody's got all this money on TV. We need you to keep doing what we need to do, not only budget or that. Okay, we got to go. He's holding it up. <laughs> you know, you. You remember, God does have a view. God does have a view personally for you. Thank you for joining us today. Bye. Going around the globe for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Welcome.